Good morning, everybody. My name is Ben. I'm the deckhand and person that records all the footage of my father's charter boat. These videos are to show you guys the action and a little bit of insight on how we catch our fish. The first step in our day is to cut bait strips. Bait strips are important because they give our lure scent. Salmon are very intelligent and will follow or chase your lure to look at it before they strike it. So it helps if our lure not only looks like a fish, but also smells like a fish. We cure our herring strips in only salt. This doesn't add any scent or flavor to the herring strips, it just makes the meat a little bit tougher so it stays on the hook longer. What we do right after we cut our bait strips is swing out our downriggers. What our downriggers are used for is to take our salmon lure down to the depth that we want to fish at. This is very important because our salmon line has no weight on it. So if we tried to send it down, it would just float to the surface. To connect our line to the downriggers, we use something called a friction clip. What the friction clip does is it clips onto the line, holding it very tightly so we can send our salmon lure down to the depth that we want to fish at. The friction clip will continue to hold onto the fishing line until a fish comes and rips the line out of the clip. Now that we have our line set, it's time to wait for a fish to strike. About 10 minutes after we set our rods, we got our first fish. When reeling in the salmon, it is very important to keep your rod tip up. This is to keep pressure on the salmon at all times, so the barbless hooks stay in his mouth. <laughs> yeah, he fights. It is really important to take your time when reeling in a coho salmon. This is because coho salmon have really soft mouths, and it is easy to pull the hooks through their mouth. We can typically tell what we have on our line, based on what the strike looks like. Coho move the rod around a lot and have a lot of jerking, pulling, and side-to-side -side actions versus a Chinook is typically one steady pull at first. When netting a salmon, it is important to be sudden, quick, and aim for the head. The head is the best place to net them because fish cannot swim backwards. So if you have the net in front of them, they have two options and that is to turn right or left. And if you do not have your net in the water and you're quick, the fish does not see the net coming. This fish that we just netted is a coho salmon. For respect for the fish, we hit the fish in the head with the bat really hard. This kills the fish instantly. Now that we have taken care of our fish, it is time to reset our lines. This is why it's very important to always be paying attention. As I was sending our lure down, a fish came and struck our lure, releasing the line from the clip. This fish struck the lure, but just didn't get hooked. After we got our line set, it was a little bit more of a wait, but we got another fish hooked up. Unlike Chinook, Koho salmon do not have to reach any minimal size, nor do they have to be hatchery or wild. How you can tell the difference between a hatchery and a wild fish is, wild fish have an adipose fin. This is a fin that is in between their dorsal and main swimming fin. Hatchery fish do not have the swimming fin. It is clipped off when they are very young, so you can specifically tell the difference between the two. 
The difference between a hatchery and a wild fish is hatchery fish have been raised in a hatchery that has been cared for by humans versus wild fish which have been spawned and raised naturally in a river. This was a really close call. When we got the fish close to the boat, the hooks popped out of the fish's mouth. Fortunately, I was still able to net the fish before it swam away. I just saw the fish come off and the first thought went through my head was, he should have that fish. Almost. What I'm doing right there is I'm bleeding the fish. While the fish is dead, its heart is still pumping. So when I cut the gills, it allows all the blood that is inside the fish to get outside the fish before it coagulates. This makes it so the fish tastes better and looks better when we fillet it. That's all the footage that I have from today. It's a shorter video just because fishing was slower, but if you guys haven't already, please help me out and hit the subscribe button and leave a like. That would help me terrifically with the YouTube algorithm and leave a comment if you feel like it. But thank you guys so much and enjoy the rest of your day.